Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to Raj Malhotra IAS. As you all know, today we will be taking up the miscellaneous topics that are left over in the week and this is a weekly series that is related with current affairs. If you are watching this video for the first time, this is to let you know that this is a weekly series. On Saturdays, we take up all the miscellaneous topics that are not covered in the previous classes. Right? And uh, hello and a very good afternoon, Ekta. Very good afternoon, Rohit Bharadwaj. Let's start with today's session. My name is Madhusudan Reddy and let's begin. See, today we'll be primarily dealing with three articles. The first article is related with the Indian, India's palm oil crisis. This is the first article and the second article will be dealing with the difference between genetic modified crops as well as the gene editing technology that is involved as well as the recent regulations that the government has changed. And we'll go after that we'll deal with the topics that are associated with the forest fires and then after we'll take up a couple of map related activities which are in the news in the last one week. Right. So today's first topic is in the uh, is a article that is published in the Indian Express newspaper which says that India's palm oil crisis. So how is palm oil crisis in Indonesia is going to affect in India. So this article says that the world's largest producer and exporter of palm oil is facing domestic shortages leading to price controls and export curbs. What explains this situation and what are the impacts for India? See before we go in detail into this topic, I wanted to tell you what are the areas which we are going to deal with this particular topic with respect to your examinations. See firstly we will try to understand what is it, why, why palm oil is important for us. Secondly, the growing conditions that are associated with the palm oil and the current crisis, why there is a shortfall of the palm oil crisis and how is it going to impact India. See yesterday RBI governor came and said that there is a rise in the inflation. So if there is a rise in inflation, especially with respect to the food and beverage sector, the rise in inflation is very high. It is because of one of the major reason is the rise crisis of the palm oil as well, right? And how is the war of Russia, Ukraine that is also leading to the crisis or in fact it is increasing the crisis and how palm oil crisis in Indonesia is impacting in India and there are some kind of ecological as well as economical significances that are associated with this crisis and finally we will also deal with the programs that the government is planning to overcome this particular crisis. So that is your national edible oil mission plan or oil palm mission, right? If you have any doubts, you can post your doubts in the comment section. I will be taking up in between and I will be addressing that, right? Now let us begin with this topic. So before you understand the importance of this particular palm oil, whenever you go into the supermarket, 50% of the total snacking items are made from your palm oil. That is the significance of the palm oil which is in the current market. You name a product, all the fried items, all the snacking items, all the industry, the industry that is dependent upon the snacking activity is dependent upon the palm oil. Now why palm oil, why not any other oil? It is because palm oil is one of the cheapest oil. So as compared to any other oil, whether it is coconut, any sunflower oil, it is palm oil which is cheaper. So and it is also an edible oil. It is one of the edible oils. It is part of the vegetable oils, right? So that's why palm oil is the important factor. Next, palm oil is also called as red oil. Why? It is called as red oil because palm generally, if you look into the tree, it is extracted from a particular type of fruit which is red in color and when it is extracted from that fruit, it actually looks like a red color oil before it is unrefined. Once it is refined, it looks in a different color, but when it is non-refined, it is purely red in color, right? And I wanted to show you some important significance activi significant activity in the palm oil, especially in the last one year and last couple of years before, what, how exactly this palm oil has been impacting the food and beverage sector. See, 
here are the graphs that are part of your economic survey and last year economic survey has also talked about this particular oil see it is said that palm oil is cheap and versatile okay how cheap it is of the total oils whether it is maize soya bean mustard sunflower you name an oil it is the cheapest oil palm oil is the cheapest and per unit area if you take one acre of land and you grow a maize oil and in a different one acre of land you grow soya bean oil the highest per unit productivity will be high will be high in the oil palm that is palm oil right now see and there are some uncertain returns which are associated with this palm oil also what are those problems we'll be discussing in the further 5 to 10 minutes but for now let us completely stick to our domain that is important constitutes of the palm oil right so government of india also ventured in with the national palm oil mission but the rate of success whether this mission is a success or a failure it is mentioned in this graph this is particularly economic survey is talking about this particular graph we'll come back to this graph later after couple of minutes or maybe after 5 or 10 odd minutes right now let's get back see last year in the upsc examination there was a question on palm oil and in the mains also there is a question on palm oil you have to understand the significance of this particular palm oil see here you'll understand why there was a question last year that too only on palm oil not on any other oils it is because you look into the data that has been published in the economic survey this is from the department of commerce have taken it from and it is also the economic survey has also been exclusively talking about this particular data see in the year 2021 in the year 2021 the total imports this is the total palm oil imports that india does india actually imports 50% of the total oil that is needed for our consumption 50% of the total oil that is needed for the indian consumption we import out of that more than 50% of the oil that we are importing it will be palm oil now you see the total palm oil imports which we have been doing in the year 2021 all of a sudden there is a drastic change in the refined oil that we have imported this is in the lakhs of tons in the year 2021 because of the lockdown period it is only 1.32 lakh tons of palm oil which we have imported because of this there has been a rise in the oil prices and that has indirectly impacted the inflation especially the food and beverage sector overall it has also spilled out onto the other oils when palm oil is less now you will go in run and search for the other oils which are edible which are meant for cooking so sunflower and soya bean oil you make it rice oil any oil that other oils demand has been risen and there is a rise in the price that is how it led to the inflation now there are major reasons why there is a crisis in indonesia and how is it going to impact india right that we'll discuss now now i have a question here sir agar india mein palm oil produce kya kiya sakta hai so why we import this is a question from simran now that's a very good question simran it is because india may also you can grow palm oil but the productivity rate in india is not same with respect to the productivity rate in indonesia if you go and produce the palm oil in certain parts of india the productivity rate will not be same as it is in indonesia why it is because your palm oil has certain growing conditions the weather conditions of palm oil is completely different uh, with respect to the temperatures that we see in india see firstly let us try to look into the conditions what are the conditions that are required for the growing this particular palm oil firstly it requires a climate that is humid tropical crop right india does have this humid tropical crop but how much of humidity does it require it requires an humidity of more than 80% does india have this the answer is no yes india does have this humidity of 80% in specially in the western ghats and in the northeastern states so that is where your national oil mission is also concentrating to increase the production rate so they are also giving some kind of incentives 
Now the temperature ranges it is the generally the temperature it is required is 22 degrees Celsius that is the minimum temperature and 33 degrees Celsius is the maximum temperature and it requires a sunlight of more than 6 to 7 hours and it is it needs a strong sunlight not just a uh, light sunlight. So that is why it is mostly confined to the tropics. Okay. It is mostly confined to the tropics. So, this particular type of climate you cannot find beyond tropics or subtropics. So, that is why this crop is generally found in the equatorial region, right. And the other condition is that soil it, it should be well drained and at least 1 meter deep root development should be there. It should be loamy, it should be alluvial, and 1 meter depth tuck this soil should be there so that when you plant the tree, it should go deep into this loamy soil and can withstand. So, that particular type of soil is generally found in the equatorial region, especially in Indonesia and in the equatorial region of the Africa, right. India also there is soil, this particular soil and all the conditions that are specially, they are mostly found in the Western Ghats region as well as in the Northeastern region. I will also explain you where exactly they are found, but before that, let us try to understand this, the story of palm oil through a small anecdote or a small story here. See, every tree on an average will give you 40 kgs of palm per year. Per year it gives 40 kgs of palm oil, one single tree. And this tree can be once cultivated, it will give almost till 25 years. For 25 odd years, you can get the oil from this particular tree. So, it is a one time investment. and only after four, 5 to 6 odd years this, this particular tree starts to give you the product. So, until 6 years where does the farmer should go? In India not all farmers are rich enough to go for plantation crops and those who are growing they are not actively involved into the plantation crop and it is a commercial crop, right. So, that is why only rich farmers can go for this palm cultivation. Why? Because in India the farmers do not have the capacity to bear the climatic uh, unstability or instability you call it, right. So, in order to get the productivity you have to wait for 6 odd years, not all farmers can afford, right. Secondly, this is also used for other products like it is also used in terms of refinery products, it is also used in your day to day activities, it is also used in other paint when you uh, you paint your house right there also it is used. So, it has multiple uses. Economic contribution involves that Indonesia alone, alone Indonesia accounts for Indonesia and Malaysia. Malaysia. Indonesia plus Malaysia accounts for 90 percent of the total production of the palm oil. That means, entire global palm oil is present in Indonesia and Malaysia, right. So, India actually imports around 9 million, million tons of this particular oil. If that is not if that is not met, that means if Indonesia stops exporting to India, more or less we have to rely on other oils which are not sufficient for the population which we are growing in India, right. Now, let us see with respect to the efficiency of the land also. Efficiency of the land in the cells as compared to any other oil which you are growing, palm oil gives you 3.8 times more productivity as compared to the other oils. If you this is the sunflower oil, this is the soya oil and this is rapeseed as compared to any other oil, the productivity of this particular oil is more. Now, see India imports around 8.5 million tons of oil, of palm oil. And in terms of total oil, total oil, I am talking about the total imports of the oil, India imports around 15 million tons, right, out of 15 million tons. Out of this 15 million tons, palm oil alone accounts for 8.5. Understand the significance of this particular oil. And last year, only 1.35 million tons of oil has been imported. That is the reason why you found an article, uh, you found a question in the UPSC. I will also show you that what kind of question is being asked, right. Now, let us get back. We will try to understand that is associated with 
this particular palm oil in India. So, in Indonesia, this crisis, the crisis, the major reason for crisis in the Indonesia is because of two reasons. Firstly, Indonesia has come up with a mandatory 30 percent, 30 percent mandatory blending with petrol. It is said that from now on you, you have to use palm oil as a blending agent in your diesel. 30 percent of your total palm oil that is being produced should now be used within domestically and they have put a target that they are now going to blend this oil with the petrol. So, that is where there is a restriction with respect to exports, right. So, with respect to exports there is a restriction and the second reason is that supply disruptions, there was supply disruptions in this particular oil because of major reasons. One, soya oil and sunflower oil, there were disruptions in the soya oil and sunflower oil thus that had spilled over onto the oil that is palm oil. How? See there was a war that is going on in Russia, right. Let me show you. Just a minute. Okay. See, the war between Russia and Ukraine. India actually imports sunflower from Russia and Ukraine, and we import palm oil from Indonesia, and we import the sunflower oil, we import the uh, other oils from Brazil and Argentina, that is South America. So, these three oils we import from outside. So, Russia and Ukraine war ki karan, we are no longer able to import the sunflower oil and other oils which we get from Russia. So, because of the blockade in the Black Sea, once, the, once there is a blockade in the Black Sea, that is when the imports of the sunflower across the globe has been stopped. So, the craze for palm oil has been increased from Indonesia and then with respect to Indonesia, Indonesia started to export to various other countries, not just to India and they have also put some restrictions on exporting. They said that 30 percent should now be used domestically. Apart from that, we there is a, this is the month of March, four months before in the South America, South America where especially the Brazil and all they were experiencing the summer season four months before during the time of winter, they are in the southern hemisphere. So, it is during that time there was intense drought, pro, intense drought which you got to see there because of that the other oils which we generally import there is not a good crop which we got to see because of which finally the two areas which we import that is sunflower and other soya oil, both oils we are no longer able to import and we are no longer able to get the amount of oil that is sufficient for the domestic pro domestic consumption. So, that is when we look forward for the palm oil and palm oil is now being supplied to the various other countries also. So, India because of the covid restrictions and now easing of other restrictions, India finally is in a position to import other oils also, right. Just a minute guys, okay. Okay, meanwhile, let me give you a brief or a short note on this. Firstly, Indonesia, it is the top producer as well as exporter to. Exporter of what? Palm oil. So, Indonesia and Malaysia together accounts for 90 percent of the total global palm oil. So, now restrictions of 30 percent domestic consumption has led to the downfall in the Indian imports, right. This is the first reason because of which we are not able to get the required palm oil and the second reason is that war in the Black Sea area. So, because of the war in the Black Sea area, Black Sea blockade 
right and sanctions so this sanctions also led to the stop of the sunflower oil right so russia and ukraine accounts for 90% around 80 to 90% of the total sunflower oil right so and thirdly soy oil soy oil it is majorly grown in south america where in south america it is in brazil and argentina right here you got to see droughts droughts here war here and restrictions on exports right so these are the three problems which has cup tripled and it led to the impact in india right why sunflower oil and soya oil production was not up to the mark so entire globe now needs palm oil right so where will the indonesia and malaysia go to supply this oil to the entire world so there is shortfall of the palm oil as well so there is a crisis here the crisis here it is because indonesia has enough oil to produce especially the palm oil but it is no longer in a position to use it for its own domestic purposes even because of the restriction 30 percent rest restriction is there they have to use it for domestic purposes and then the domestic purposes also they have listed out where they can use for what purposes they can use so that is why this particular crisis is now spilled on to india as well right this is the crisis of the palm oil now let's get back and see some locational aspects with respect to the black sea and see this is your black sea as there is a war that is going on russia russia ke upar sanctions hai and ukraine ke upar is also ukraine is also in a no longer position to transport its products outside ukraine that's when the black sea blockade was there and india india ke liye imports all that come from russia is through black sea only right so the only gateway is now blocked from the mapping point of view it is also important for you to look into the straits that we cross between india and if one has to go from india to russia what are the straits one has to pass through if you know it please comment in the comment section i've already told many times in the classroom but once for all as a revision i'll be taking up see from black sea to sea of azovs there's a stretch straight of kretch and from black sea when you cross this istanbul there is strait of bosporus and you have sea of marmara sea of dardanelles and every there is a strait between each and every sea please make sure to make sure to look into the map so that you would be able to answer if there is a question in your preliminary examination right now let me take you back i wanted to ask you a question that is associated with the prelims in the year 2021 right see let me ask you this question so this is a question that has been asked in the preliminary examination 2021 with reference to the palm oil consider the following statements the palm oil tree is native to southeast asia the palm oil is a raw material for some industries producing lipstick and perfumes and statement 3 the palm oil can be used to produce biodiesel which of the statements given above are correct statement a option a 1 and 2 only b 2 and 3 only c 1 and 3 only d 1 2 3 please comment down in the comment section if you are watching this please comment down the answer if you know this i'll be repeating the question with reference to the palm oil consider the following statements the palm oil tree is native to south asia only south asia the palm oil is a raw material for some industry produced producing lipsticks and perfumes the palm oil can be used to produce biodiesel 
see I see answers coming as D B B. Now there is a technique to answer such type of questions in your preliminary examinations. I will tell you one such kind of technique whenever you find any science and technology question or whenever you find any possibility related questions. See read the statement clear, clearly the palm oil is a tree in native to Southeast Asia. This is a factual statement right. This is a factual statement. Now the palm oil is a raw material for some industries producing lipstick and perfumes right. This is also a factual statement. The palm oil can it is said can be used to produce biodiesel. Now this is a possible statement. Why possible? Because it is said can either it is possible or not possible right. It said the word here it is used is can and now it is said that here also the word here it is used is some industries. Whenever, whenever you find words like this some can may most of the times those statements would be right right. I have already told you it can be used for biodiesel this is the problem this is the problem that has created in Indonesia right. Now coming back to the palm oil is a native tree to Southeast Asia. I have told you that Indonesia is and Malaysia account for 90 percent of the total global palm oil production but the answer is this is not a native species to Southeast Asia why? The this is a native species to Africa. This is a native species to Africa. So, statement 1 is wrong, the answer would be 2 and 3. Now, a species that is not native to Indonesia, then why are they growing this particular this much amount of oil? And did it impact any kind of ecological or economic activities in that particular area? The answer is yes. What kind of eco ecological impacts it has done? you should understand. See over the years Indonesia has went in for intensive cultivation of the non-native crops that is your palm oil and being a non-native crop it has been bought from African countries and being planted in the Indonesian region especially in the Sumatra and Java regions. So that is where the intense cultivation took place. So over the years since 2013 there is an increase in the cultivation area of this palm oil. So, when the cultivation of this palm oil increased there is there are forests that has been cut down and the livelihood of the people who are living in that forest has been impacted their lifestyle changed their rehabilitation and resettlement activities have not taken place in a proper way. This is the one such criticism of this palm oil cultivation and palm oil crops and secondly as the forest has been cut down there is one particular species that is orangutans. orangutans they are the flagship barrier species for the Indonesian regions. This orangutans now started to move into the areas into the interiors. When the forests are cut down they started to move into the interior areas as in when the more forests are cut down they started to go little outside. So, the man animal conflict has increased. The number of orangutans that are present in that region has been decreased. It is said that only now 8000 to 9000 odd orangutans are present. Earlier the number of orangutans used to be 20 odd thousand. So, 50 percent of the total population is already lost it is because of this palm oil right and it is this species which relies upon the palm itself the fruit of the palm right. So, its natural habitat has changed its natural way of food intake that has changed. So, orangutan for orangutan is the species it is a species which has been impacted right and because of which man animal conflict and specially the forests are completely put on fire every now and then illegal firing is one such thing you get to see in this particular area. So, that the forests are cleared and the next after 5 to 10 odd years again you can grow some palm trees. So, once you plant those palm trees they get their return after 5 odd years and the farmers are rich enough to cater to this particular tree plantation and they can wait for 6 odd years and then they get the product right. This is what the palm oil crisis. Now, let us come to India as well. So, if this is such a big crisis and what is Indian government doing to deal with this particular crisis? India actually started a program called National Edible Oil Mission that is oil palm mission which is also called as NMEO 
OP or NM National Edible Oil Mission Oil Palm. Under this, it is said that whoever grows the palm oil in the cultivated areas or non-cultivated areas, we will be giving you some kind of incentives. It is said that the project, this particular mission is aimed to harness the domestic edible oil. Now, edible oils are nothing but the cooking oil which can be used in your day-to-day -day eating activities or day-to-day -day activities. Those are your edible oils that are dictated by expensive palm oil prices. So, to raise the domestic production of the palm oil by three times, that is 11 lakh metric tons by the year 2025 to 2026. By the year 2025 to 2026, it is said that 11 lakh metric tons is going to be increased. Now, rising the area under the palm oil cultivation to about 10 lakh hectares by the year 2025. The numbers are visible to you here. The numbers are not much important, but the intent behind this is important. Now, coming to the features, where exactly are we planning to grow this particular palm in India? It is said that those areas, I have told you 250 centimeters of rainfall is required and it is a continuous rainfall and it requires six months, uh, six to eight hours of intense sunshine alternatively and it also needs some loamy soil, right? Under these conditions, there are specific areas, especially in the Western Ghats region, in the central part of the Tele southern part of the Telangana, southern part of southeast part of Andhra Pradesh and northeastern regions are some areas where the potential for growth of palm oil is there, right? Apart from this, if you look into the significance of the scheme, it is said that reduction in import dependence, the main aim of the scheme is to reduce the import, import that we are doing. It is almost 8 million tons or 8 million tons of oil that we wanted to reduce by 2030. For that, government will give you or give you some kind of incentives that is incentive production and it also tries to reduce the dependence on the imports. And thirdly, it will help the farmers by giving cash right? How? Incentives diya jayega. If you grow more plantations, we will give you more funding, right? Maybe for six odd years, the government will give you some kind of incentives. It can give you free fertilizers. It can give you some kind of new technology at a cheaper rate as compared to the rate. Subsidies diya jayega, right? The ultimate aim of this project is to increase the yields and especially buying palm oil from Indonesia and Malaysia need to be reduced. And finally, we also import soya oil from Brazil and Argentina, sunflower oil from Russia and Ukraine and 94% of the total palm oil is, 94% of the total palm oil is used in the food products, especially for cooking purposes, right? So, it is also said that Pasai says, Pasai says we have to reduce this dependency. How? We should go for olive oil. Increase the cultivation of the olive oil once or you can go for other cultivated crops which give oil to a healthy lifestyle. So these are some of the recommendations that are also given by Pasai. Right? Now let me show you the areas that are that has the possibility of growing palm oil in India. The green color areas, whatever you see here, are the areas which has the potential to grow the palm oil. So, mostly, if you see, they are within the Tropic of Cancer, right? Just below the tropics, right? And areas that have good rain and good sunlight, right? In the central part of India, you don't find good rains. but Palm oil can also be grown under a proper irrigated facilities. Proper irrigated facilities means even if you doesn't have good rainfall, you might have questions that Telangana, Maharashtra, interior parts of Maharashtra and some parts of Chhattisgarh. So why there is no rainfall of not more than 150 to 200 centimeters? How is palm grown there? It is because here irrigation facilities are better than the areas. So they depend on the irrigation, right? So through irrigation facilities also we can grow palm oil. This is the story of the palm oil. I hope you got some value addition to the your preparation. And let me also take you through the UPSC paper analysis, how the questions are asked in your agriculture and this crop related questions. See, I've taken up some quantitative data from the UPSC, especially questions on the crops are usually asked with respect to 
rice, jowar, cotton and sugarcane. These are the major crops and most of the crops they are always present in the MSP area. So there are 22 plus 1 crop that is your sugarcane. So these are the areas your questions keep on rotating. So it is important for you to look into the GM crop, moringa, tamarind, palm oil and sugarcane. These are the areas which UPSC every now and then there are some questions, right? So let me ask you another question which has been asked in the UPSC 2021 that is with respect to the one of a crop. So among the following, which one is the least water efficient crop? This was the question that has been asked in the UPSC 2021 preliminary examination. If please comment in the comment section if you know the answer. Deepak Mishra says A, Shravan says C, Anjali says A, Kriti says sugarcane A, Kishore says A, Rahul says D. I'll wait for 10 more seconds. Okay, Vikram says D, Rahul Bhatt says D, Rohit Bharadwaj says 1B. Now the answer here is sugarcane. It is A. You have to understand some kind of growing conditions for each and every crop which I have mentioned in the previous slide, right? Now, the explanation here says that sugarcane needs 150 to 250 centimeters of rainfall and sugarcane crop will be given only after 12 months after its cultivation. Sunflower needs 60 to 100 centimeters, millets need 45 to 65, gram and chickpea needs only 35 to 50. So these are good crops that can be grown in your soils, especially these three crops, sunflower, which actually increases the yield as well as increases the soil moisture retaining capacity as well as it also increases the quality of soil, fertility of the soil, right? Now let us quickly get into the next article. Our next article is an article that is related with the genetically modified crops. Now see here, what is genome editing and how is it different from GM technology? This was the news article which has been published 3-4 days earlier and and a further series of articles you get to see here in the newspaper. India is a release, India is a release of genome editing norms. Experts say MOVE will help breeders and researchers. So the central government in the recent time, hardly one week back, it is said that now genetically modified crops which were once considered to be a hurdle now be tweaked or it can be the new crops can be bought in through the genetically edited that is genome edited crops. Now there is a difference between genome editing as well as genetically modified crops. So before that there is a question here Deepak Mishra has sir there are varieties of gram, gram grown red black etc does water used for all of them is same no. See when the variants change there is some kind of changes in terms of uh, the water availability sorry the water intake there might be some changes maybe 10 to 15 centimeters of rainfall can be the variation but not much of variation right i hope you got deepak mishra right so what are the negative repercussions of growing palm oil this was the question that has been asked by the rohit bharatwaj see if you start to like the negative repercussions which you got to see in the indonesia that orangutan started to move away and forest fires increased because of the man-made forest fires, they started to burn the forest so that after 5 to 10 odd years, they can use that forest for their benefits and grow the crops there. In India also, there is possibility. The forest can be cut down. The tree cover can come down by growing the palm oil. When the palm oil is grown, usually the groundwater intake, the groundwater, groundwater table at times is also fallen down because palm oil needs so much of water intake. So that will also take away these can be some of the negative impacts, right? Now let us come back. So before that, I wanted to ask you a question here. This was asked in the UPSC previous year question that is 2019. This is related to with this article. So the question here is, what is Cas9 protein that is often mentioned in news? A molecular scissor, option A here is a molecular scissor used in targeting gene editing. B, a biosciences used in the accurate detection of pathogens. C, 
it says that a gene that makes plants pest resistant d a herbicidal subsistence synthesized in genetically modified crops please post your answers in the comment section if you are aware of this answer even if you doesn't know i'll be explaining you in detail so all the answers that i see on the comment section is all a okay a molecular scissor used in targeted gene editing yes it is the answer a bio scissor used in the accurate detection of the pathogens in the patents no a gene that makes plants pest resistant no it is actually a scissor case 9 is a protein that is used in the cleaving one of the and nucleotides or the one of the new strands of the dna and uh, it can be used in various forms in actually cutting ligasing as well as restrictasing the genes right so from the examination point of view especially these articles falls into your current events of national and importance which are respected with respect to your prelims preparation and with respect to your mains examination there is a separate syllabus for your general studies paper 3 that is awareness in the field of it and space computers robotics and nanotechnology biotechnology and issues relating to the intellectual property rights in the issues related to the intellectual property rights as well as biotechnology this is where your topic falls into right now what are the areas which we are going to deal it is genome editing kya hai as well as crispr cas9 kya hota hai what are genetically modified organisms how are they different from genome edited crops this is something which we are going to learn in detail now see before that first you have to understand the structure of dna if one does not understand the structure of dna it is very difficult for them to understand what exactly is this particular component for that let me give a brief idea about dna so that it will be very easy for you to understand see a dna is generally a double helical structure double helical is nothing but it is like a ladder which is in this way right double helical a single helical is nothing but it will have only one strand double helical it is like a ladder which is turned and twisted and this particular dna has nucleotides that is paired with uh, a there are four nucleotide or nitrogen base pairs or four nucleotides that is a t g and c in dna in terms of rna that is adenine thymine gc uracil is the component which you get to see uracil is something which you get and in okay i'll ask you a question here in rna one of the nucleotide is missing what is it if you know the answer please comment in the comment section i told you dna has four nucleotides that is a t g c that is adenine thymine guanine and cytosine these are the four nucleotides that are present in your dna so what is the nucleotide that is absent in your rna it is thymine so these nucleotides of the dna are paired with each other in terms of your dna that is a always pairs with t and g always pairs with c like this they are paired now these are paired with each other a always pairs with t and g always pairs with c right likewise they the pairing is in such a way right and the double helical structure which has is based on the helix of the sugar phosphate this particular helical band is called sugar phosphate right and this particular pair a is pairing with t and g is pairing with c this is called nucleotide base pair this is called base pair right now rna has only one single strand this is a single helical single hel single strand dna has two strands this is the basics of the dna which you have to understand before we get any further into genetic editing and genome genome editing right i hope you all know about this and we'll so that we can further enter into the topic so central government in the recent times has come up with one particular reform that is 
genome editing crop through SN1 through SN or SDN1 through SDN1, SDN2 are permitted. I know there will be some confusions with respect to your full forms SN1 and SN2. SN1 is nothing but site directed nucleus, site directed nucleus. SN1 means SDN1. This is site directed nucleus. So, in order to edit your DNA, there are particular methods. So, there are three particular methods in which you can edit your DNA. That is true SN1, SN2 and SN3 methods. SN or SDN is a methodology that is called site directed nucleus and there is also an other methodology through which you can all actually cut your DNA or edit your DNA and change the DNA and bring in some new DNAs through various methodologies. The other methodology that can be used here is sequence specific nucleus, sequence specific nucleus. Right? I have told you there are two methods SDN1 and SSN. So, to, through these methods you can actually cut the DNA. Right? Government said that SDN1 and SDN2 sorry SDN1 and 2 are the methods which you can use. It is said that SDN3 is not the methodology which can we can give you a go ahead and do the modifications in one that particular DNA. So, why is this so much in use? Can we, there was already genetically modified organism plant or GM technology plant here. If you know about that particular plant, please comment down. There is a crop which we have already in the market, it has been in usage since 2004 or 2005, which is called BT cotton, that is Bacillus thuringiensis cotton. First, I will tell you the major difference between genetically modified organisms or genetically modified and genes. Genes. So, collection of genes, if you have certain traits in your body, it is because of these genes, right? We say that genes does not go anywhere, they come Bt cotton. Bt cotton is nothing but bacillus thuringiensis effects to various other bacteria as well. So, it is a bacteria which actually produces toxins. So, may not be that easy the way it was. So, cry 1 A, these genes are taken, these genes has the potential to kill the bollworm. What is bollworm? Bollworm is a genetically modified. After that, it is cultured and now the plants when they grow, in that and this particular plant will also have Bt that is Bacillus thuringiensis. Once the plant grows and the leaf will also have Bt's in it right which is toxins which is harmful. It is said that this is not as harmful to the human beings in the short term but we as humans will not eat this leaves right. So, it is this cotton bollworm which comes and eats and it dies. So, cotton plant flourish right. This is the technology that has been used in the Bt cotton production. This is called GMO technology, genetically modified organisms. But when it comes to the gene editing technology, this is different or sorry genome editing technology, this is different. In the genome editing technology, you do not introduce a foreign gene. Here you have used a foreign gene right. What is this foreign gene? The foreign gene here is your Bt. Bt is an organism that itself is a microorganism which is present in the soil which is a toxic element. The genes of this Bt in the form of cry1 gene which has the genetic material or the genes in it that you have taken and given it to the plant cell that is your cotton plant. But in terms of genome editing, you will not bring any kind of outside genes. You will either cut them 
or either urology or genetically modified organisms that is a debate to ethical activity. But for now what government has done is it said that it has given clearance to the gene editing technology. If you are going through geno, uh, genome editing technology then we are going to give you a green signal right. So it said that but you have to use the techniques of SDN1 technique or SDN2 technique. I will now try to explain you what actually is SDN1 technique and SDN2 technique. SDN1 that is in the SDN1 technique site directed nucleus. I am talking about site directed nucleus. Site site directed nucleus in the site directed nucleuses that means you are actually directing this particular technique to go to one particular point of the DNA. If this is your DNA you are actually targeting one part, part of the DNA not the entire DNA right. So entire DNA is not taken into consideration maybe you are targeting this particular strands only in this particular strands there are also base pairs right. A will bond with T, G will bond with C, A, G, G, A like this there are base pairs right. Now you may be targeting this particular area. This particular area is either deleted or modified internally without bringing any outside genes. This is the SDN1 technique. You will not use any outside agents. In the SDN2 technique using a small DNA template to generate specific changes. In the SDN Two, you will actually use a small DNA template. Small DNA template. Here also you are not going to get anything from outside. DNA template is nothing but you already know if this is your DNA you actually know what are the base pairs that are present in this particular region and for every the combination of this particular base pairs that is A T G C A A A G G this, this particular sequence will be different for each individual. So the genetic material will keep on changing whenever there is a changes in this particular base pair compositions right. So if you have the template, template is nothing but this is a you already know what exactly is present there and now you are bringing a template from outside and changing this then it is called SDN2 technique. So government has allowed SDN1 and SDN2 but it clearly said no to SDN3. It clearly said no. Why? SDN3 is more or less like bringing a big a very big size DNA platelet or big size DNA template into an other organism more or less it replicates or it is in conjugation with the genetically modified organisms. So government said no and what is the body which actually takes care of this particular genetically modified organisms or genome editing. Earlier it was the government body that takes care of the genome editing or is G E A P genetic engineering appraisal committee. This is a body that is present in the ministry of environment and forestry climate change right. From the preliminary examination this is the important aspect which we have to look into right. So SDN1, SDN2 this is less regulated. For any changes in a crop or for any changes in a food or any changes in the human aspects it is this is the topmost body which has to say yes yeah, which has to say no only then that particular product will come into the market or that particular technology will give will be given and go ahead right. Along with this along with this now the government has said that there is another body that is called IBSC. There is another body that is called IBSC. What is IBSC? Institutional Biosafety Committee. Institutional Biosafety Committee.
this body will now take care of the genome editing procedures or genome editing go ahead how they will be taking up case by case they will be also going for detailed studies the, it is a consortium of committees which oft, which looks after in detail regulations and they are subjected to the regulation and rules of the environmental protection act 19 environmental protection act 1986 under these rules there will be monitoring earlier your genetic engineering appraisal committee is also used to take care of this it is said that for now time being it will be under the genetic engineering appraisal committee later with respect to time we are going to empower the institutional biosafety committee which is ibsc which is under it is under which ministry if you know please comment in the comment section right these are the regulatory bodies there are also application bodies there are also reviewing bodies in which deal with the genetic engineering so i'll take you to a website where you get the possibility of questions that i see for the examination i hope you can see this is the ministry of science and technology department of biotechnology website in this website you will get to see an area here where it talks about certain bodies these bodies are the genetic engineering appraisal committee right and ibsc this is ibsc this is genetic engineering appraisal committee and recombinant dna advisory committee there is also state biotechnology coordination committees as well as district level committees for us the most important aspect is geac and ibsc i have told you that geac is part of the ministry of forestry and climate change so why is this body present in the department of biotechnology that too in the ministry of science and technology it is because it is a regulatory or approval body which also has committee members from the ministry of science and tech that is from the department of biotechnology only but the nodal ministry of genetic engineering appraisal committee is ministry of forest and climate change it is ministry of forest and climate change is the nodal agency for geac that is genetic engineering appraisal committee for the ibsc in the later stages of this particular genome editing that will be the institutional biosafety committee this institutional biosafety committee what it does is it is a series of committees more number of committees which involves scientists which involves doctors which also involves the environmental panelists as well as various people from various institutions and they will decide should we go ahead with this particular product or not right that is ib f ib sc that is institutional biosafety committee right let us get back here. I hope you got the difference between genome editing as well as genetic modified crops. Now, let us quickly look into some important points with respect to the GEAC. The, what is Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee? see it is the apex body which act which is a regulatory body as well as it is also an apex body which takes care of giving certificates which is also takes care of giving genetically modified stampings as well as final technical go ahead it is on the ministry of environment and forest change that you can see it on the board itself it also takes care of usage manufacture storage import as well as all the organisms that can be stored in a one particular place now if you have read about the climate or if you have also read about the environment or the environmental protection act in the year 1990 you might have come across there is a protocol in the rio earth summit you might have come across cbd right unfcc and what is the other organization which came up if you know it please comment down they are also related to this particular committee this committee also has roles in convention of biological diversity right it gives inputs to cbd it also gives inputs to unccd what are the species that need to be 
given guidelines it also has data inputs given to that particular organizations now I, here i have a question that ibs e is under which ministry sir see ibsc is under the ministry of science and technology under the department of biotechnology right ibsc i am repeating again ibsc is under the ministry of science and technology under the department of biotechnology genetic engineering appraisal committee is under the ministry of forest and climate change environment right so look at the composition also if you look into the composition of the gesc here you will find there will be special secretary or additional secretary of the ministry of forest and climate change along with that you will also see the department of biotechnology they co-chair it it is a dually regulated body they co-chair ministry of environment forest and climate change as well as biotechnology right i hope you also got the difference if you do not understand the difference it will be please make sure to understand the difference if you have any questions please ask me now the next article is an art article that is published in the hindu newspaper it says that indian power projects replace chinese ventures in sri lanka so couple of days back this article was in news which talked about earlier those areas which were actually given to the chinese for the sri lankan development these islands were development activities earlier taken care by china now they are given to india this is something with respect to the mapping it is important so naina thivu delphet or nendun thivu these are the islands along with that alant alanti thivu it is very hard for me to also pronounce but all of these are also present in the jaffna province right let me try to show you the map point here these are islands which are very much near to our coast okay let me type these are three islands which are very much near to the coast of india right so this particular island these are the three islands which have been given to indian companies so that there can be development that can be taken place the first one is alantitivu delphet island this is the island that has also been given to us maybe from the mapping point this this i see it as important and here next to this there is a disputed island that is your kachativu right this is your kachativu island this kachatiwu island is the disputed island between india and sri lanka it is said that we when indira gandhi was there we have given this particular island to the sri lanka as a gift right we have given this particular island as a gift to sri lanka okay now next article is related with respect to just a minute guys okay so from the last 15 odd days there has been fire breakouts at sariska tiger reserve this is not the first time first fire breakout that has taken place at the sariska tiger reserve it for sariska tiger reserve around 200 odd people and two indian air force helicopters have been put forward to deal with the forest fires for the examination point of view you have to know where exactly sariska tiger reserve if you know the location of the sariska tiger reserve if it is in which state it is in which state please comment down if you know the answer i'll be telling you in the next couple of minutes see firstly sariska is in rajasthan forest fires in india are nothing new forest fires in india are there since the existence whenever there are forest but the major problem the news if this news article clearly talks about is that the forest fires regular activity it is the intensity of the forest fires have been increasing especially the unseasonal forest fires in india the forest fire starts from the month of may june and july this is the time where one gets to see the forest fires in india but for now the shift in the forest fires are taking from march to may earlier 
these were the three months which the forest fires used to happen now almost the time period has been doubled right from march se lekar almost till july august tak you get to see this forest fires how much percentage of india is exposed to forest fires 62% of the total forest area in india is all one or the other time has been exposed to forest fires why the reasons for the forest fires can be man made can be natural usually most of the forest fires do have natural causes whenever their branches hit towards each other if there is oil within it the fire breaks out and because of the intense heat the dried leaves sometimes they also do generate forest fires and the other man made reasons is that if tomorrow you become the forest officer and if you have a tussle with the locals there in order to take a revenge what they do is they simply go and burn the forest this is also one of the methodology to get forest fires now with respect to the forest fires i have also dealt with this in, in the previous classes see forest fires are generally of three types firstly you have to understand the types of the forest fires that is first one is the ground fire second one crown fire third one underground fire right this is also called now if this is your surface there are trees in the month of march and april there will be leaves that are shedded down right most of the india has deciduous forests this shedding of leaves and at times small man made interventions or natural causes can lead to this forest fires but because of the change in the climate in the recent times and because of the intensity of the temperatures that you get to see the marine heat waves the heat waves the land heat waves they are creating the extreme temperatures because of this extreme temperatures you are also able to see the forest fires crown fire is nothing but for a tree from the top this is called crown so this if tree completely gets fire from the top then it is called crown fire ground fire is this is nothing but this is called surface fire the leaves that are fallen down if they take get the fire this is called the surface fire or ground fire and at times the branches that are fallen down or they get converted into coal or they get converted into fire led elements which are under the ground right they can also have fire in them this is called underground fire slowly the surface fire as a ladder it will go up onto the crown and crown fires are the most dangerous fires as compared to the ground fires because once the crown fire is the crown is on the fire no longer the animals in that particular area can survive for a ground fire the animals can go up onto this tree and survive but when there is crown fire no animals when there is crown crown se niche bhi fire aa sakta hai because on the ground there will be enough fire so the loss along with the loss of this plants or the trees with there will also be loss with respect to life wildlife also it is said that fire break out of sariska tiger reserve but it is also said that no tigers have been harmed but with respect to mapping you should look into the sariska tiger reserve kahan pe hai what are the rivers that are present in the sariska tiger reserve if you know please comment in the comment section now there is a comment here is that sir agar india ne island sri lanka ko kiya gift so sir what is the reason behind the island dispute see it is just said that uh, there is no proper treaty that has been signed when we given when we have given that island to sri lanka so it is a disputed island because because of the demarcations every now and then when sri lankans get into the fishing they enter into the indian territorial waters and our people get into the indian uh, sri lankan territorial waters that is where the dispute starts so there is no clear cut demarcation the people presently the kachatiwu island is under the control of sri lanka itself not in india the people who live there in the jaffna province they talk jaffna is nothing but the northern province of the sri lanka right it is the northern province of sri lanka just a minute let the board respond okay let me show it here itself
imagine this is your sri lanka right the northern province this particular province is called jaffna so the islands which are present here they are occupied by tamilians the people who speak the language there is tamil right so for india it's a concern india thinks that they are our people which we have to help them because they are people who have moved from tamil nadu to sri lanka in one or the other period of time right now the last article which was in news is the ipcc intergovernmental panel on the climate change intergovernmental panel on the climate change have also dealt with this particular topic in the previous classes also so i'll give a brief idea what is the update with respect to intergovernmental panel on the climate change i have already told you that ipcc is an intergovernmental body it is a united nations body it is also a body which is formed under the un along with the coll collaborations with the world meteorological organization right i have told you that there are three working groups let let us quickly get into those three working groups and understand what are the roles of the working groups and what is the update that has been present in the last couple of days with respect to ipcc right now the first working group working group in the sense this intergovernmental panel on the climate change it gives reports every two years whenever it comes with the report the report which we had today is the sixth assess sixth assessment report that is the in the sixth assessment report this is the third one right in the sixth assessment report this is the third part it gives three parts in the three parts it will tell you the first part will tell you about what are the challenges or what are the problems that the climate or the earth is facing and what are the climatic challenges in the second what are the challenges that climate is going to get in the near future if you don't reach up to 2100 us time tak if we do not limit ourselves to 1.5 degrees celsius what are the impact that we are going to face in the third one it says that what steps we need to take what steps the immediate steps we need to take these things have complete have de de discussed in detail in the previous classrooms i'll share the link in the description please make sure to go and look into see before that i'll quickly revise what is ipcc ipcc is intergovernmental panel on the climate change for the preliminary examination this is very much important it will not do any kind of research it will actually collect all the researches that are made across the globe and it will give a report based on those researches it on this report there are consensus with respect to the united nations and it is formed under the aegis of the un and the world meteorological organization and it has three reports one that is based on the scientific basis on which countries across the world build their policy responses to the climate change secondly they are not respect to the policy perspective and thirdly they are meant to present factual situations right now three working groups the first working group is aims at assessing the physical scientific basis of the climate change it will try to understand the physical scientific basis scientific basis means is the warming really a threat to the planet or not if at all sometimes the kinds of technology that they have used to discuss in detail about the change in the climate it will check the credibility of that in the second working group it talks about the socio economic and natural systems that the climate and change or the negative impact that can bring in and under the third report it clearly says that assesses options for migrating climate change through limiting or preserving greenhouse gas emissions so what are the steps that need to be taken right now right away it talks about right now there is a question from vikram aditya so can underground methane uh, burst can be considered underground fire yes underground methane that can be considered as underground fire yes it can be considered right so and one question before i end this series so the recommendations of the ipcc are mandatory or non mandatory please comment on in the comment section if you are aware of it is it a recommendatory thing or the country should abide by the ipcc recommendations now there is another question sir tamil people are living in jaffna region yes the jaffna's language is tamil only right 
people who speak there are Tamil. There is a crisis between India. The killings of Rajiv Gandhi are also associated with this uh, LTT and Jaffna. Okay, Kishore Gandhi, Ganesh says recommendatory principles not binding. Yes, they are not binding. They are not binding on the member nations or they are not binding on the countries. And here I am going to end our session. I hope I have added some value to your preparation. If you do also think so, please press that like button and subscribe to our channel so that whenever we come up with the more relevant articles, you get notified. Right? And thank you. Take care.